guys. Today I'm going to talk to you about alkalinity, how it relates to pH, how it relates to calcium. So let's get right into it. All right, guys, quick science lesson. Put simply, the alkalinity of your aquarium water refers to the capacity it has to buffer against drops in pH. So one way to look at it is a higher DKH or alkalinity will prevent the pH of your tank from falling too rapidly. My 75 is fluctuating between 9 dKH and about 450 calcium. Sometimes the 9 goes a little higher, sometimes it drops a little lower. And my pH seems to always be around 8.2 or 8.3. All right, so how do we use that information? Let's say you have a lower pH, below 8. So a higher alkalinity will help stabilize your pH. So a DKH or alkalinity of 9 DKH or higher will help stabilize your pH. So what's this all about then, guys? It's about calcification. So the ideal pH range of 8.2 to 8.5 at a fixed alkalinity will create the best conditions for calcification to occur. What I mean by a fixed alkalinity is one that's staying the same. So each time you're measuring it, you're getting the same measurement. An ideal range of 8.2 to 8.5 pH and an alkalinity of between 9 and 10 dKH will create the conditions for the best calcification. Here comes the caveat. A higher pH makes it more difficult to maintain a stable alkalinity. I know, right? So how do we provide alkalinity? Alkalinity is provided through carbonates, bicarbonates, borates, and hydroxides. If you're two-part dosing, one of those parts is alkalinity, and if you read the ingredients, you'll see that all these that I've mentioned here are listed. All right, the way you supplement your tank with alkalinity has to be supplemented with calcium. The two go together. I've mentioned this in my other videos. So two-part dosing is a combination of equal amounts of calcium and alkalinity. I have a couple older videos for you new reef keepers that show you how to do this, how you figure out the quantities and whatnot. Look in my aquarium maintenance playlist. All right, so let's talk about how to get your alkalinity up if it's a little low or even if it's a little too high. I did a video of this some time ago, but I'll mention it here. Water change is the simplest. If your salt mix is a balanced calcium and alkalinity ratio, I use Instant Ocean Reef Crystals. I've used it for 29 years. It's got an equal ratio of calcium and alkalinity. The DKH is 9 and the calcium is usually around 450 when I've measured it. Keep in mind, it's not a good idea to try and raise one without the other. 
calcium, alkalinity, and pH are all played out together, so to speak. Another way to increase your calcium and alkalinity is through Kalkwasser dosing. I choose the method of using Kalkwasser in my ATO, and that seems to work really well for me. There are some limitations with Kalkwasser. Kalkwasser has a very high pH, 12, and you can overdose by adding too much too quickly. So it's important to go very slow with Kalkwasser if you're relying on it solely for your calcium and alkalinity. I like using a small amount of Kalkwasser in my ATO as an additional supplement to my two-part. This way, I don't have to use as much two-part. And also, Kalkwasser has the effect of precipitating phosphate, which is also a good thing. Another means of supplementing calcium and alkalinity would be through a calcium reactor. I won't get into it here, but usually reef keepers who require a calcium reactor need an extremely balanced tank. They're usually keeping an SPS dominated tank where it requires large volumes of calcium and alkalinity to be added. <music>